Sweet. Um, I know, I'm Justin. Uh, you talk about Gervais syndrome and um, childhood epilepsy, severe childhood epilepsies. And uh, my wife and I, we have 19 month old twins with Gervais syndrome, which is a very severe form of epilepsy. And so we've been exposed to CBD treatments with, with a lot of kids with Gervais throughout the country. And in the world. In the world, yeah. And one of the things that we have found most frustrating, um, besides the very early on scientific research is the availability for high CBD plant material. Because a lot of times when we start talking about specificity, let's say in MS patients, you're looking at it's like a two to one ratio of CBD to THC. Um, for your more your anti-epileptic effects, you know, some of these kids are needing like 40 to one or 20 to one really high ratios of CBD. And it seems like they're, our biggest problem is finding availability of high CBD strains and also making sure that we have the quality control to have it tested to know exactly how much we're giving our kids because anything that's acting on the brain, especially with seizure, especially with anything when you're talking about seizure disorder, you can't go really high up on stuff and you can't drop off on stuff. So supply issue is huge. You know, you can't just run out of medicine. I mean, they'll throw your kids into seizures and you never gain control again. And so um, with your working, I mean, how, that's one thing I can see Project CBD be able to help us, to be able to coordinate finding strains and finding supply um, to be able to treat our kids. Yeah. Um, you know, we are at the beginning in some ways of this experiment, this grassroots experiment. This, uh, uh, but there is increasingly now, it's been a couple of years since uh, Project CBD has been around and we've been kind of you know, doing this stuff. And, and finding that the response is very positive for a wide range of conditions, actually. But this is a particularly dramatic situation we're talking about. Um, extracts certainly would seem to be the way to go as compared to the little kid. I don't know if I'm going to it. It's probably not. Extracts is what you want. It's, it's, they tend to have a more powerful, more profound effect. Uh, and yes, something that will, whatever. I wouldn't so much worry about two to one versus three to one. You know, anything that, if you tried it yourself and it wasn't psychoactive for you, the odds are it's not going to be psychoactive for your kid. Uh, so it's one thing you can do. I, I, is you can actually test it yourself. I'm not so worried about you know, my kids being psychoactive and getting high on it. But unfortunately, I mean, for us to really know what's really working well, you need to know exactly how many nanograms or milligrams of CBD, how many nanograms or milligrams of THC you're giving your kid. Because otherwise, you're just playing a crapshoot, yeah. and you're not going to be able to yeah. you're not going to be able to know what is what is effective. No, you're absolutely right. Um, it's part of the problems with the industry being at a young age. Did, I was going to respond to that, but if you want to, I'm with the uh, Halo 360. We do tests, so we keep all the test results are online. You know, I've better seen better it. Better. Better. We can usually try to put them in touch with the vendors or the co-op. Yeah. I should speak to them. It's about that. Well, generally, you're, you know, with THC, your highest THC numbers, you know, are very rare. Yeah. It's all supplying the hand. So these guys are the first to do. But generally, the ones that are focusing on CBD medicines have a little bit supply. Let me speak to your question of supply. And this year is be the biggest harvest of CBD rich cannabis in, in California. You know that. And again, it takes a while to build momentum, and this has been a difficult time for the industry. And uh, dispensaries are their community is basically stoners, and I don't mean that as a put down. That's what generally people go to, uh, at least in California, that's mainly who's going to dispensaries. And then you got this product that doesn't get you stoned, and the dispensaries want to sell it and make money, but maybe it doesn't. It moves really quick right away, but then not so quickly. That, you know, this is uh, getting to know each other, period, that's been happening. But I think things are starting to turn the corner. I know that there's going to be a lot of CBD rich culture, uh, CBD act, extract of measurable doses, unprofessionally. An example of which I have here. This is a CBD rich tincture. 7.2% CBD, 1.6% THC. Uh, and the, we, there are plants turning up that have that 20 to 1 ratio. You have to be a little circumspect about these numbers, I think. But, but basically showing that very high phenotype of CBD to THC. Just the opposite of what we usually find, basically. Mm -hmm. they're, they're around a little bit, and we've located them. They're being grown out. Uh, but with, with 
the way that the statewide collective does in California, and they're not a storefront, they just produce this extract, is they, uh, uh, they work out a situation where people grow a, uh, a plant, and if they have a pound of CBD-rich cannabis, not trimmed, they're not just a pound of plants, you don't have to go through that rigmarole. <laughs> just take off the big stalks, and you give it to them, and you get a leader back, and a leader will last you a very long time. You're talking about something this tall, uh, that will last you months, even if you're using the high doses all the time for your kid. So, uh, but you can also buy those leaders because people are growing more, you know, if it's a family of, you know, it's relatively, you know, the, the usual things in America, you know, with not a dramatic illness, still can benefit quite a bit from CBD rich men, you know, as a, as a protective, as a, as a friend of. Um, uh, but how much can you use if you're growing a garden with 20 plants or something? There's going to be extra stuff. So with the extra stuff, they're getting this around. Technically, they're not supposed to leave California. I took it across the border. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not coming. Our California cars. There's ways to make that happen. I mean, no. This is good. There, there needs. This needs we to get around to the people who need it. There's going to be a lot of this stuff yeah. coming from this one operation I know in California, and I know others are revving up. There. This is one I respect, and I, they're, I know they do good work, and and, and they gets very good reports. There, their extracts, and they do different ratios. Um, I think a lot of the growers around here are starting to get, get to CBD. Here is to the ground. Maybe some people, yeah. maybe that's all they want to do. Some people, that's some of what they want I think CBD strains will start to become more popular. But I, I think that it, it's possible that, as in California, it's not so much the bud that's going to move. I mean, people, people like the bud, but they want trim to make butter. And, you know, there's a lot of ways to use CBD that's out of the, you know, perfectly trimmed bud mode to mm -hmm. get the best. You know, it doesn't conform to that whole thing, you know, and so it, and that was also part of the clash of cultures with the dispensaries a bit, but you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, in any case, it's, it's going to be coming around, and in situations like yours, I'm sure people will, will step up to the plate and make sure that it gets to you. That's what I can say, because that's what they're doing. Yeah, so it's like easy that. for you to be put in touch with them, and you know, it's not, you know, it's not that far to to Los Angeles, whatever, or I don't know how all the specific, I'm not here, I don't, I'm not an employee. But I know that's around, and it's a question we get all the time. Uh, so I would say take heart. I think it's going to be increasingly easier to do this, uh, to, to, to get what you need. And, and uh, uh, there's no reason a statewide affiliate couldn't be operating in Washington or Seattle. Why not? It's in a use to it. Like, make sure you guys get phone numbers before you leave here today. Yeah. There's some I know owners in here. Collective Health, I know, is very interested in CBD rich cannabis. That's why we, when we, we happen to be communicated, they contacted the Project CBD, had a question. Uh, I said, oh, oh, you're from Seattle? I, you know, I'm coming up. Do you want to do a talk? You know, so uh, they're very interested in this. I know that it's something they're going to emphasize, not instead of, but in addition to uh, the high THC strains that are very useful and very popular. You know, again, we don't see it as you do this, not that. Do it all. Just give people a wide variety of choices in not only smokable and inhalable forms, but other forms. <coughs> That'll particularly, I think, be a strong suit for CBD and work well in those ways. I got a question on sure. the dosages. We, we kind of specialize in CBD work, quite a bit, several strains, but um, how many strains would you have Getting the message out there about dosages or the best delivery system, I guess, for this system, you make, you know, like turtle tabs and that sort of thing, for specified quantities. In it. What is the best delivery system? I mean, a lot of people want to smoke it. Some of them want to. I don't think there is a best, quite honestly. You, I mean, as far as getting the CBD into your system, they have to do uh, these tests. It's the same as uh, what's a good delivery system for cannabis. I mean, cannabis is the delivery system, and you can get it anyway by applying it, by eating it, by smoking it, you know, and it would have the same advantages and disadvantages as it would for uh, the high THC strains. Uh, of course, if you eat high THC strains, you eat too much, you know get a little bit loopy, but, uh, and that's less likely to happen with a CBD dominant strain. However, if it's one-to-one, -one, you will get something. I mean, it's not like well, we you personally won't feel that. Two, you got two to one, yeah, one, to one. one. Yeah. So I, I don't think that there's necessarily a best way. I think depending on the person's condition and the situation, if a person's got asthma, definitely inhale, inhale, you know. But if a, a person's, uh, I, 